treize, trinadzat, dreizen, talatat ashra, shisan, trese, tera. I don't know how I can make it any clearer than that. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Boy, it has been two months since I've done a chapter of my whole darn CD collection, and by golly, I decided now's the time I better bring one to you. And I think I might actually record two episodes, two chapters back to back, uh, just because you guys have been waiting for a while for them, and also uh, because I may not uh, have time to do them for the rest of this year. We're coming up on the very end of uh, November. Uh, yes, Thanksgiving weekend. This is the end of my Thanksgiving weekend, so uh, uh, it's been a little busy, and it's only going to get busier for uh, with regards to what I need to get done in the month of December on my channel. So anyway, so yes, I will probably do a double header back to back chapters. Uh, not really close together, but, you know, within within a week or so. Anyway, uh, yes, my whole darn CD collection. Uh, this is chapter 13, as I hinted at in the uh, cold open. If you are multilingual, you picked it up pretty quickly, I'm sure. But anyway, yes, uh, 90 CDs. I, I show you 90 of my titles in every chapter of my whole darn CD collection. And you thought I was done, didn't you? You thought I'd forgotten about it and w or was giving up? No, this is a... Uh, uh, series that I intend to see through to the very end, to the bitter end. Every last CD I own, uh, the guilty pleasures and all. But anyway, uh, it, it's been a while, as I said, so I've got a few uh, recent arrivals that have uh, been added to my collection in the chapters, uh, in the section of my uh, collection before where we're starting today, which is A through uh, the beginning, beginning of the M's. So let's get started with Pat Benatar. This is a two-disc collection all fired up, and uh, yes, I bought this to replace the one-disc uh, budget-sized compilation. It only had like 11, 11 or 12 tracks. This has uh, let's see, 16 and 17, so 33 songs of Pat Benatar, one of the premier rock goddesses of the 80s, as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic artist. And I got a couple of Garth Brooks. Uh, these were at the thrift store, a buck a piece, so I decided why not give them a try. Uh, we've got... Uh, no Fences, and the one right after that, Rope in the Wind. And these were part of a box set. Uh, you might be able to see that the covers are uh, have foil on them. And, uh, so yeah, you can see, uh, the Limited Series is, I guess, what the collection was called. Uh, yes, the covers are actually just that, the uh, just the front cover inserts. There's no booklet with them. So I am missing out on that, I guess you'd say. But... I just wanted to give Garth Brooks a try. I'd never given him a real try before, so not bad. Not my favorite country artist by a long shot, but I'll probably hang on to these for a while. And then we have uh, a uh, new CD, or not a new CD, but uh, one that I didn't own before, by a group called Friendly Fires. This is their uh, self-titled album, de debut album, I think. And yeah, I found this at uh, Epic Seconds in the... Was it just 250 or was it $4? I can't remember, but... Uh, and you might recall in the year that their most recent album, Inflorescent, uh, was released, it was in my, I think, my top three favorite albums of the year. So, awesome album. And this one is uh, pretty good as well. So, yeah. If you liked Inflorescent, you will like their self-titled offer uh, effort as well. And then, Hadaway. This is uh, early 90s uh, um, R&B, electro, electro pop. Uh, dance pop is really what it is. And, yes, his... Uh, Big hit song, What is Love, is on here. Uh, yes, uh, kind of a kitschy song, but uh, it was... Uh, I, guess, I guess it wasn't part of Internet memes. It was part of, I think, a Saturday Night Live sketch. Um, Night at the Roxbury. That's the movie that this sketch was based on. Uh, the the guy, three guys were always dancing in the car to this. I think it was to this song. If I'm if uh, I'm not mistaken, I'm not a Saturday Night Live expert by any means, so I could be mistaken as to the actual song. But anyway, kind of a pop culture punchline, but hey, a good song and a good album, lots of fun dance hits. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. That that catches us up with the recent rivals. Let's go ahead and get on get on started. Get on started. I, I, I'm picking words out of the thin air, I guess. Let's go ahead and get started with the regular block of ninety. 
CDs, my next 90 in my collection, we left off, as you might recall, with Johnny Mathis, and there are still a few more to come in my Johnny Mathis collection. Uh, because, you love, be, yeah, because You Love Me, the songs of Diane Warren, uh, one of the best pop songwriters of the 20th century, in, if you ask me. So yes, a bunch of her songs on here. Unbreak My Heart, which was a... Oh, uh, Patti LaBelle? No, I don't think it was a Patti LaBelle. I can't remember, but... Uh, uh, yeah, you know, you know that song. Uh, Love Will Lead You Back. That's a great song as well. Uh, if You Asked Me To, that was that was a Petty LaBelle song, I think. And uh, Because You Loved Me, that was, I think that was popularized by Celine Dion, if I remember. Set the Night to Music, which was a Roberta Flack hit. So, and Missing You Now, which was, I don't know if somebody else made it famous before Michael Bolden did it. But he made a very popular single out of it. But yes, a bunch of great love songs. If you like love songs, then Diane Warren is the Beatles of love songwriters, I guess you'd say. I hope that's not sacrilegious. Uh, but yeah, good, good album. And of course, it's Johnny Mathis singing the songs, so that only makes it better, in my opinion. And then this one, I think I showed you in one of my thrift store hauls. This is a two-CD set um, highlighting his time on the... Uh, Columbia label, I believe, for, um, oh no, the, the Mercury label. Yes, he's been on Columbia his entire career, but he showed up on, uh, took a brief stint on Mercury Records, and this is the best of his Mercury tenure. Pretty good stuff, a, a two-disc set. And then we're into Johnny Mathis's most recent studio albums, Isn't It Romantic, the Standards album. And uh, yes, as you can see on the cover, it's got uh, Over the Rainbow, the classic Wizard of Oz song, uh, the title track, Isn't It Romantic, a great um, a great American songbook standard. Love is Here to Stay. And uh, there's a kind of hush, which was... I know it was done by Herman's Hermits. I don't know if anybody else made it more popular than they did. But, to, oh, The Rainbow Connection. The, the Kermit the Frog song, in other words. I've always loved that song. And uh, actually, the, the Over the Rainbow song that he does is a duet with Ray Charles. Can it get much better than that? I don't think so. And then we have A Night to Remember, another Johnny Mathis album. This one's from 2006. The print is so small in here, I can't, rem I can't really see it. He has um, features Yolanda Adams, Dave Cause, the jazz saxophonist, Monet, who is a uh, R&B singer, I believe, as well as Gladys Knight is on here as well. So, And, oh, and Kenny G, another jazz saxophonist. Uh, you Make Me Feel Brand New is uh, a hit we all know. Just the Two of Us and Walk On By, the um, why can't I remember her name, Dionne Warwick song. My brain's a little... Uh, and uh, We're In This Love Together, another great song. So Johnny always seems to pick the really, really good songs to put on his albums. And this is my favorite recent Johnny Mathis album, Let It Be Me, Mathis in Nashville. It's does it's uh, Mathis covering a bunch of classic country songs. You know, I mean, we're talking really uh, classic old school country stuff. Uh, Let it be me, the uh, the Everly Brothers hit. He does a duet with Alison Krauss on that. Love that song, and uh, Love Me Tender, the the Elvis Presley classic. Uh, what a wonderful world, the Louis Armstrong song, I believe, and uh, Crazy, which was a. Uh, um, not Gladys Knight. Patsy Cline hit. <laughs> I'm telling you. And uh, yes, a bunch of great, great songs on there. A, a very good reason why it's one of my absolute favorites. And then this one, since Let It Be Me was such a great album, I loved it so much, uh, it was almost inevitable that this next one, uh, his most recent studio album, I believe, uh, was going to be a bit of a letdown. Johnny Mathis sings of the new Great American Songbook. And this has him covering more recent songs. Uh, Hallelujah, the Leonard Cohen song, which is not not exactly recent, but, you know. And uh, You Raise Me Up, which is a, a song that has, has done the rounds recently with uh, a lot of contemporary pop artists. Uh, Just the Way You Are, which is the Billy Joel classic. And uh, he does a cover of Happy, the Pharrell Williams song. I don't know... Yeah, that... He, it's, he's, he did an okay job of it. It's just, it's a weird fit for Johnny Mathis to do a song like that. I don't know. So yeah, 
that that album kind of had a little, a few more misses than hits for me on it, uh, sad to say. And they used auto-tune on his voice. Why would you use auto-tune on Johnny Mathis's voice? I blame the producer. And who was the producer? Ah, Kenneth Babyface Edmonds? Gosh, I've really gotten to like Babyface since I heard this album first, so... I guess I can forgive him. Anyway, moving on, before I make this video exhaustively long. The Mavericks. Uh, you've heard me talk about them recently. I had a two-disc uh, gold collection of theirs, and I decided to let that go in favor of collecting their studio albums, just because they have uh, enough good songs that I felt it was warranted. This is their self-titled debut. And we have uh, this one. A couple, of these, a couple of these you saw in a recent uh, uh, good um, thrift store haul video. Music for all occasions. I love the cover of this one. It's kind of a throwback to the old 50s, cheesy 50s album covers. And Trampoline is their next one. I think Trampoline is the one that's kind of got me starting to, really made me decide to drop the hits and collect their discography. And then their second self-titled album. This was from 19, uh, 2003, I believe. They had taken a break of like five or six years, and then uh, they came back with a self-titled album. Lots of great stuff. Kind of a, a bit of a Tex-Mex country sound to it. So yeah, uh, Raul Malo, who is a Latino, is the lead vocalist, and so they can't help but put a little bit, a little bit of a Mexican uh, sound into uh, contemporary country stuff. So it's interesting stuff. Check it out. If, you, if you're not afraid of Latino sounds and music, check it out. Then we have a uh, favorite of my sister's, a favorite artist of my sister's, and that kind of compelled me to, uh, the albums that were in her collection that I inherited compelled me to continue collecting, and I believe I have his entire studio album's discography, John Mayer. This is his debut album, Room for Squares. I guess technically it wasn't his debut because he had a, a uh, independent label release before this, I think. And actually that one I do not have. So I guess I can say I do not have his full discography. But anyway, uh, Heavier Things, his follow-up to that one. And uh, yeah, it would take me too long to pick out my favorite songs from that. And uh, those two, as well as this one, were in my sister's collection. Try, which is a live album with the John Mayer Trio, with uh, Steve Jordan and Pino Palladino. Very good stuff. It, it covers a lot of his... Uh... Oh, actually, I guess this should be after Continuum, I think. And uh, yes, uh, I've mentioned before that I have some tinted jewel cases. I decided to put this one inside of a blue case. So, And total coincidence that I happen to be wearing a blue shirt today. Didn't even think about it. But uh, anyway, yeah, as I was saying, uh, this has some songs from Continuum, so I think this belongs after Continuum. I had it in my on my shelf before Continuum, so a minor no-no in my uh, arrangement. And then his next album, Battle Studies. Some, uh, some albums are better than others. And uh, some people don't like John Mayer. I can totally, uh, I can see that. I can understand. But in my opinion, the fact that my sister loved him so much uh, is, is goes a long way toward me liking him. I mean, he's a wicked guitarist. There is no argument with that. Uh, I saw him live in concert when he went on tour with Sheryl Crow in 2006, I think it was. And he completely blew me away with what a great guitarist he is. I had no idea until I saw him then. And then his next album, Born and Raised. And then Paradise Valley, which is one of my mo one of my favorite albums of his. Uh, great stuff. You wouldn't think his sound would uh, translate well to into a country or country-ish um, uh, aesthetic, but yeah, he does a pretty good job. Yeah, I, I would recommend this. If you uh, are having trouble getting into John Mayer, I recommend that one. And then his two most recent albums, uh, we have The Search for Everything. Aren't we all searching for everything in some respect? And then his most recent album, Sob Rock. Horrible album title, but a good album. Harkens back to the great 80s uh, soft pop radio sound. Yacht Rock, although I hate that term. Radio sounds. And yes, she's got a big old crack right here in the uh, case. But uh, yeah. I'm going to take a drink here. I'm parched. Anyway, so yes, that uh, brings us up to the up to date on John Mayer. 
Then here we have, in another tinted case, by the way, a, a yellow tinted case in this case. Um, in this case, get it? <laughs> um, no pun intended. Uh, we have a favorite album of mine, and I hate it. This guy has only put out this one album and has not put out another one since. Uh, this is from 2012, I think. Yeah, 2012. Connor Maynard. He is a British uh, pop singer and songwriter, I think. I think he wrote most of, wrote or co-wrote most of the songs on this album. And it's just, it's great, great pop. I love it. Uh, I, I can't describe why I love it, but that's, you know, some of the best music you have, you can't, really can't describe how you love it. It, it takes the mystery out of it if, if you can quantify why you like it so much. That's my opinion anyway. But yes, this is the, I believe it was the Target Edition with a whole slew of bonus tracks on there. So, yeah. I mean, if you love that... I was going to say boy band pop, but that kind of sells it short. But, I mean, I guess it's kind of the same general style. But, yeah, if you like NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, uh, you know, in the turn of the millennium, and this is kind of a throwback to about 10 years before this album was recorded, right? Really right around turn of the millennium sound uh, in a 2012 album. Very, very good stuff. With some R&B elements mixed into it. So, which I guess they did back in the, at the turn of the millennium, too. But anyway, uh, next up we have... This is an interesting little oddity in my collection. It's a single, and I think it's the only release that these guys ever put out. It was a country group called McAllister. At least I assume that's how you pronounce it. But yeah, a two-track single. Uh, I Apparently it didn't sell very well, or it didn't get much radio play, and so I guess the... Because uh, this was on MCA you know, MCA Nashville, and so I, it looks like, I think, MCA Nashville just dropped the group before they even put out an album. So so this is kind of a one-of-a-kind rarity. I don't know how much of a rarity it is, but it's not bad. Uh, the song, the title, the main song, the A-side, is I Know How the River Feels. And uh, Looking Over My Shoulder, that's a really good song, too. So, yeah. Oh, McAllister, wherever you are. That was a good couple of songs. I wish you'd gotten a good record deal, but anyway. Then we have an artist. I've got a few of his albums, uh, and this is from my sister's collection. Uh, I believe two of, this, two of these CDs were from my sister's collection. Edwin McCain. Uh, this guy's a uh, rock singer-songwriter, and his big hit was I'll Be. Uh, yeah, so very, very good song. And if you've heard that song, that's basically Edwin McCain's style. Uh, so yeah. Very, very good stuff. Uh, it's been a while since I've listened to these CDs, so I couldn't point out any really good songs. And his a follow-up album, Messenger, is another good one. And, yeah, I I would just be grasping at straws trying to name tracks off of here. And the th next album in that uh, run, Far From Over, and that is the, uh, the most recent album of his that I have. Yes, despite the title, uh, Far From Over, I am... That marks me being over-collecting Edwin McCain CDs. Not that they weren't good, it's just that's as far as I got. Nothing after... I think I tried one album after that, and nothing really caught my ear in that, so I decided not to keep it. Then we have a CD that uh, I used to own a while ago. Found it at a thrift store a few months ago and picked it up, and, you know, it wasn't that bad. I kind of liked it. Jesse McCartney and his album Right Where You Want Me. He goes in a bit of, a bit more of a rock direction rather than the R&B pop that he had been doing. And I liked it. And I actually liked a couple of... Um, uh, Nick Carter did that with his first album. He kind of did a rock-style direction, kind of like Brian Adams. But then after that, he went into pop and R&B. And I always kind of hated that he did that. And likewise, this was Jesse McCartney's only venture into a more rockish sound. And he went back to the pop R&B. So. Oh well. I guess he just... It just didn't feel right for him. How can you fault him? Then we have Paul McCartney. This is a the two-disc Wingspan Hits collection. Uh, yes, I found this in the... I think it was in the $2.50 bin at Epic Seconds. This was a few years ago. So, And I mean, a couple little scratches on the CDs, but nothing really major, so... I was kind of shocked that something, a, a title that that good, was in the two and a half dollar section. So, there we go. And then, 
this, I think I found this at um, a St. Vinny's thrift store. Has live album back in the U.S. Good stuff. And his other, another live album, which this was in my sister's collection. Good evening, New York City. Yeah, this is a very good one as well. So yeah, kind of like with back in the U.S., it's a mixture of his solo stuff, his wing stuff, and some Beatles stuff. So I've never seen McCartney in concert, but from the sound of those two live albums, he puts on a heck of a show. And then we have, for you American Idol fans out there, Scotty McCreary. Uh, his debut album, Clear as Day. <laughs> the uh, the lead-off lead -off single. I just The title is very cringy. I love you this big. I, I like Scotty McCreary. I love his voice. He's got a great voice. Just the name of that song. I, I don't know. They could have uh, written a, a song for him that was a little less cringy, don't you think? Anyway. And uh, his follow-up album, See You Tonight, uh, the deluxe version. So, yeah. I uh, I picked up his third studio album. And I actually also have his holiday album. I picked up his third studio album, though, and di just didn't strike me. You know, there just wasn't anything nearly as memorable as on these first two albums. So, what can you do? Then we have Michael McDonald, a classic, classic vocalist from the 80s. Uh, lots of his uh, a handful of Doobie Brothers hits and a couple of other uh, duets, but the vast majority of it is solo stuff. Yes, What a Fool Believes and uh, Minute by Minute by the Doobie Brothers, two of my favorite Doobie Brothers songs. And uh, I Keep Forgetting Every Time You're Near. It's a great solo song. And Sweet Freedom, Sweet Freedom it's a great one. So, yeah, very good stuff. And, and Talk About a Voice. Great voice. Now, this one was... I believe this was at a thrift store. It may not have been. I, I can't remember now. Anyway, Joe McElderry, unless it's Joe McElderry, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but he was a, uh, a singer or a finalist on X Factor, I think, back in the UK. And uh, so I saw this and I picked it up. Yes, I think it was at a St. Vinnie's store. And I was actually really impressed. Very, very good stuff. Um, I'm thinking about... Uh, I, I've taken a look online, but have not uh, taken the plunge yet and bought uh, his follow-up album, his sophomore album yet, but I really want to. So, very good stuff. And then an artist that uh, is so popular and so well-known that she, she only has to really go by one name, Reba. This is her double disc number ones uh, collection. I loved her sitcom back in the 90s, 2000s, uh, Reba. And the, the title track from that show is on this uh, CD. Great pair of, of albums. And then another one. This was one that I had bought before and got rid of and bought again. And actually uh, saved money buying it the second time because it was during Skip's Going at a Business Sale, her duets album. And this is just fantastic. Uh, Kelly Clarkson, Trisha Yearwood, Carol King, Kenny Chesney, Justin Timberlake, which is an unusual combination, Leanne Rimes, Don Henley, all those people and more she does duets with. Excellent. Uh, one of my favorite duets albums. I don't have a lot of duets albums, but so I guess it's one of my favorites by, by default. <laughs> anyway, and then on to one of her most recent albums, which actually completely blew me away with how amazing it was. Stronger Than the Truth. Love this album. This is just first-rate country, and this album does what country does best, and that is story songs. Songs that tell really, really good stories, heart-wrenching stories. Uh, and yeah, just listen to this album if you haven't yet. Do yourself a favor. Even if you don't like country, you may like this album. You might be surprised. And then we move on into uh, another Mac. We're not done with the Macs yet. We're actually only about halfway through. Uh, we have Bobby McFerrin. Uh, this is his debut album, I think, The Voice. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he uh, he does a song here called I'm My Own Walkman, which, uh, yeah, songs with titles or lyrics having to do with music, you know how much I love those. So, um, yes, Bobby McFerrin has been the butt of a lot of jokes, but honestly, he is super, supremely talented. Uh, Spontaneous Inventions is another great album, and 
there's a, I think it's on this album, let me check, because there's actually no uh, track listing on the back cover. Um, Beverly Hills Blues. That is a great song. It's a duet with Robin Williams, the comedian Robin Williams. You, If you've never heard of that song, if you don't know about it, you've got to listen to it. It's great. It's kind of a precursor to the Weird Al Yankovic song, Third World Problems. It's just, it's so, it's funny and it's great and a great satire of uh, how spoiled we Americans can be. But yes, Beverly Hills Blues by Bobby McFerrin and Robin Williams. You've got to listen to that. Write, write it down or make a note of it right now so you don't forget. Anyway, another Bobby McFerrin album. This is the, the big hit, um, uh, Simple Pleasures. This is the one that had uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy, which is, yes, a, a, a very kitschy song. Probably got more attention than it was, than it deserved, but still, it's in the history books. There's no erasing it. Uh, he does a version of the Beatles song, Drive My Car. Very good rendition of that. And uh, Good Lovin', the Rascals song? I can't remember who did that. But they, And uh, Susie Q, the, uh, the song that um, Creedence Clearwater Revival made famous. So, uh, yeah, I give this one a try. There's much more to it than just Don't Worry, Be Happy. And then another one where he kind of delves a bit into the classical realm. He teams up with Yo-Yo Ma for the album Hush. Very interesting album. It does uh, a combination of songs and classical pieces. And uh, Bobby McFerrin uh, accompanies Yo-Yo Ma in, you know, actually lyrically and sometimes just singing background, backing vocals. So, uh, yeah, very interesting album. I like that one. And now, let me take another drink. My throat's kind of dry today for some reason. <clears throat> and we're doing okay for time, it looks like. Here we are with an, a favorite um, British act of mine. Uh, well, I, I'm just going to introduce them. Uh, McFly. They are a great uh, pop band. They were kind of a manufactured... Uh, actually, were they a manufactured band? Did they a prefab group or not? I can't remember. I can't remember if they were... If they came together of their own accord or, or if they were put together by producers or whatnot. But... Their first album or two were, were definitely uh, buffed and polished and stuff by producers. They were going for that teen pop demographic, no question about it, but incredibly catchy songs on here. Uh, Five Colors in Her Hair is fun, but they have, you guys are going to, comparisons with the Beatles are have gotten almost cliche. It's almost cliche to compare uh, artists to the Beatles, but honestly, you listen to a couple of the songs on here, they were so well done, and they were written by the guys, or almost entirely by the guys. But some of these songs have an almost Beatles-esque um, ease of melody and rhythm to them. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm really describing that, that adequately, but the song, obviously, check that one out. And, uh, and then That Girl is another great, great, super catchy song. I mean, just they're so unique and so... It's almost like some of these songs have always existed even though they haven't. Uh, but yeah, just the song That Girl in particular was very, very cleverly written. And obviously it's one of those songs that has kind of almost like a Beatles-esque ease of melody to it. It just kind of flows right out. And I know I'm not describing them anywhere near adequately enough. <clears throat> and you're probably crossing your eyes and uh, wagging your finger at me for comparing them to the Beatles. But, you know, give them a listen with an open mind. You might see where I'm coming from, at least. You might at least understand why I I am uh, comparing them to the Beatles. Just, you know, be, be fair, be honest, be, be open-minded, is what I'm saying. Anyway, their sophomore album, Wonderland, is great. This one kind of went into a more, uh, more moody direction. Um, Room on the Third Floor, their debut, was definitely super pop, catchy, feel-good, happy stuff. Uh, Wonderland goes a little bit into some darker territory, although it does have some love songs on here. Uh, All About You is a great love song. That's another one of those that's kind of almost Beatles-esque in its melodies. And uh, I've Got You is a great, um, a bit more of a rocking song. I Want to Hold You is another, almost kind of a, kind of like a punk pop sort of a, <clears throat> a song. It's great. So, yeah. I love these guys. Um, they just, they could almost do no wrong in my opinion, all, except for, I'll, I'll get to it in just a minute. Uh, their third album, uh, Motion in the Ocean, 
is another great one. Transylvania is probably my favorite McFly song. Check that out. It's um, it's great. It's like it's it's like nothing you've ever heard. I'm going to actually put that out there and say it. It's it's like nothing you've ever heard. So, excuse me. So yeah, give that one a try. And the almost the entire track list of each of each of those three albums is is great. There's almost not a dud on there. And then now this one. I can't remember. Oh, I'll keep going for now. Um, Radioactive is their. Can't remember if it's their fourth or fifth album, but uh, yes, another fun, fun album. Uh, not as good as their other three, or as their first three, but it's good. And uh, then I have a two disc hits collection. Uh, yes, even though I have, well, I actually I don't have all their studio albums. Uh, one they put out, uh, I can't remember if it was before or active, before or after Radioactive. They tried going into an electro pop, dance pop kind of a thing, and that was not a good album. So that one I do not. Uh, I no longer own that one. So yeah, that one, that's one that I, I don't even I don't even need. I don't even feel the compulsion, at least not right now, to own it. But uh, yes, so uh, lacking that album. Uh, this one still has plenty of stuff on it because it got a whole bunch of B-sides and actually a couple of non-album singles that were not on these uh, other albums. So this is well worth having, even though I already have their other four studio albums. So yes. Very, very good stuff. I like McFly. and uh, But they've put out a new album that I, uh, this year or last year, um, listened to the singles and wasn't terribly crazy about it. Uh, I might revisit them at some point, but uh, for now, I've got all the, all the McFly that I need. Then we come into a... Uh, <clears throat> this guy was uh, a new kid on the block back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and he went solo in... The early mid '90s, no, the late '90s. Yes, uh, New Kids on the Block had been dormant for what five, six, seven years, and he decided to put out uh, a solo album, the first of several. Uh, Joey McIntyre, uh, stay the same. Uh, he was he was my favorite New Kid back when the group was active, and uh, this is a good album. I like it. Um, let's see, "Stay the Same" is a good song. Uh, well, it was the, the first single, and it was it was okay. Um, I'm trying to think of... Yeah, this was a less favorite album of mine than his sophomore album, Meet Joe Mack. And kind of, as suggested by the title, he's he kind of kind of reinvented his sound with this album. So he gave it... Uh, and it, this one's better, in my opinion. Uh, Rain is a great, great ballad. I love that one. Uh, Walking My Baby Back Home, that is not a cover of the song that Johnny... Uh, no, jo not Johnny Mathis. Uh, Nat King Cole made famous. Different song. Uh, easier is another great ballad, and one one of my definite not so guilty pleasures is National Anthem of Love. Corny title, probably cheesy lyrics, but I I I love it. What can I say? If you listen to it and you look at me cross-eyed and wonder how I could possi possibly like a song like that, then sorry, but I do. Hey, you. You guys out there probably like stuff that's stupid and corny, too. So, so you know, don't be the pot calling the kettle black here. Anyway, his next album, 809. Uh, is a very good one as well. And this one, I can't remember if I heard this one first or um, if I heard the collaborative concert album uh, he did with E-Man, which I showed you in back when I was doing the E's. Uh, that was in there. Uh, but he does a couple of songs on here that were also on that live album. Um, where is that song? Falling. A great, great song, and I kind of like... Do I like the live version more than this one, or, or do I like this one? I can't can't remember. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a very good album. Uh, L.A. Blue is another good song. So, yeah. And then... Oh, <laughs> beg your pardon. I did not show you that live album back in, uh, in the East because it is under... It's billed to Joe Mac first, so it's so here it is. This is the one I was just talking about that I told you you'd you'd seen before, but you hadn't. So uh, yes, apparently this one was put out afterward, and uh, so but yeah, great stuff. And uh, yeah, Falling is on Eman's solo album. Uh, Emmanuel Kiriaku is his name. 
Uh, he's become a great, uh, a very well-known, well, a very in-demand songwriter and producer now. So, But he did an album of his own way back when. Wish he'd done more, because it's a great, great album. But, uh, yeah, good stuff on here. And fun uh, little interludes, spoken word interludes, conversation between the two guys. They, they give each other a little crap here and there and make jokes about each, uh, at each other's expense and stuff. So they're really good friends, obviously. And then the most recent one of his that I have is called Talk to Me. And this is mostly Great American Songbook standards. I uh, got a good a bunch of good stuff. The Way You Look Tonight, uh, I Get a Kick Out of You, My Funny Valentine, that kind of stuff. And he does a very, very good, jo very, very good job of that. He's got a great voice. And it's a voice that's very well suited to uh, pop with a little bit of R&B in it, like, like the previous albums, and uh, uh, traditional pop like that. So very good stuff. And then we have another more recent, uh, well, not really more recent discovery. Uh, I found I discovered her back in 2004 when her first album came out, uh, Nellie Mackay. Yes, it's spelled like McKay, but it's actually pronounced Mackay. She is a British uh, singer-songwriter, and she's got a wicked sense of humor. She's great at satire and just uh, irreverent kind of humor in her songs. And yes, the hype sticker uh, actually it makes sense when you listen to the album. Uh, draws comparisons to two of pop culture's polar opposites, Doris Day and Eminem. Yes, that, that's totally true. So yeah, she's uh, yeah, and a whisked teenage songwriter plays piano and riffles through styles from Tin Pan Alley to hip hop. And yeah, she raps here and there. She does, you know, has some jazz flavored songs and R and B flavored songs and rock flavored songs and, and every other style you can probably imagine is in mixed in her stuff. She does great, great stuff. Um, oh, I Want to Get Married is a satire on married life that uh, a lot of uh, feminist women will find uh, hilarious, maybe? But anyway. And Won't You Please Be Nice is... Uh, yeah, that That's kind of a... Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting song. It's about a woman who basically... A woman who's probably got psychological troubles and demands that her boyfriend be nice to her, or else. Like I said, she's she's got an irreverent and weird sense of humor sometimes. And then her her follow-up album, I believe, Pretty Little Head. And yes, this one, like her first album, is a two-disc set. So yes, you uh, as you can see, she's kind of uh, she's kind of ballsy for for insisting on putting out double disc albums, uh, you know, one right after the other. <clears throat> and then we move on to, she actually signed with, uh, well, actually, her first album was on Columbia. That was a major label. And then she went to an independent label for one or two albums. And then back to a uh, a semi-major semi -major label, Verve Records, for a tribute to Doris Day. Uh, yes, Normal as Blueberry Pie, a tribute to Doris Day. And she actually does some of Doris Day's lesser-known songs on this album, which I thought was really uh, interesting. She didn't go for the plain old, you know, same old stuff. Uh, she does Sentimental Journey on here, so that's a uh, um, more well-known song, but yeah. And then the most recent album of hers that I have is from 2010, and it is called Home Sweet Mobile Home. And yet again, uh, int uh, interesting sense of humor on a lot of these songs. Um, I cannot remember. It's as I've said before, uh, the reason the, the only problem with having so many CDs is it's been quite a while since I've listened to a lot of these, so I can't remember off the top of my head any really good songs to tell you about. <clears throat> and then we're getting into an artist that I collected. Um, I got some CDs from my sister's uh, collection, Inheritance, uh, which made me prompted me to pick up a couple other CDs. Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, this one I actually was at um, a store up in Portland. Uh, I had the sing the one disc uh, edition before, but I saw this one, the Legacy two disc. Actually, it's a three disc set. Um, it has the Fumbling Towards Ecstasy, uh, Ecstasy album as disc one. Disc two is the Freedom Sessions um, CD, which was released separately before, and she actually has a live DVD as the third disc. So there you go. 
And then uh, this one was one of two, I think, that were in my sister's collection, Surfacing. Uh, good stuff here. Uh, Building a Mystery is a really good song. I enjoyed that one. And then uh, Afterglow is the next one of hers that I have. Followed by Laws of Illusion. And so yes, uh, another artist that I need to um, listen to her stuff because it's been a while since I have. So, But uh, yeah, very, very good stuff there. And then we're on to Don McLean. We're, we're almost finished with the Mex. The MC capital, whatever. Uh, classic album here, American Pie. The title track is, is uh, right there. And he does a cover of Vincent, which is... Um, was it Van Morrison that did that one originally? Or was it a Don McLean original? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Vincent, Starry Starry Night. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this definitely, and this one was, I think it was a dollar. So yeah, and again, the, the disc was you know maybe had a couple of little little tiny scratches on it. So yeah, if you know where to look, you can get really really good deals on CDs. And uh, this one here is this next one is it was a gift from my friend Noah. It was I believe a birthday gift uh, last year, my birthday. Uh, he gave me uh, Andrew McMahon in the wilderness. Yeah, Andrew McMahon in the wilderness. Sometimes when I try to talk too fast, uh, the words stumble out, stumble over each other. But uh, yeah, very good stuff. I'm not really, really into him. I need to uh, really absorb his music more. I haven't given myself enough opportunities to do that. Uh, but I do have, you know, three of his uh, albums as Jack's Mannequin, which I really enjoy. So uh, yeah, very good stuff. Thank you, Noah. And then we have this CD I had been searching for for quite a while. And eventually it was in, sitting on the racks, I believe, at a store up in Portland, uh, Everyday Music up in Portland, for uh, $2. I can't remember what the price was. Anyway, uh, Carmen McRae. Uh, this is a set of her uh, kind of a greatest hits uh, collection. What made me buy, the, buy this album is uh, there's a movie out there called Real Genius, and it was one of Val Kilmer's earliest movies. It's a great a very, very funny movie with a very witty script. If you like intelligent dialogue and witty scripts with stuff that you, you know, makes you think for, for a moment, that's a great movie to watch. And anyway, the title, uh, the song that they played during the opening titles of the movie was You Took Advantage of Me, the Carmen McRae recording of it. So that's why I wanted to pick up the CD, was to have that song. Uh, I don't think they ever put out a uh, soundtrack album from that movie, so... And the next best, best thing is having that album. That also had, um, the, the movie also had uh, Everybody Wants to Rule the World by uh, by U2. No, not U2. Tears for Fears. <laughs> and a couple of other well-known songs from the day. So. And then this one was a, uh, I believe this was a bargain bag CD from last year. Uh, Robin Mead. Uh, kind of a country-esque sort of a uh, thing. Yeah, she does. She has... Uh, uh, features from Bo Bice and Billy Dean and Jim Brickman, the, the uh, pianist. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. <clears throat> and now here we go on to a nice little uh, spate of CDs. I have two, three, four, five, six, seven CDs by Meatloaf. I, so I have all three of the Bat Out of Hell CDs, as you will see here in a second here. Uh, this is the first one, Bat Out of Hell. And then I obviously had to have the deluxe version of Bad Out of Hell 2, because it has all of the single edits and the uh, the in-between uh, versions. Uh, for instance, uh, what do they call it? Uh, I do anything for love, but I won't do that. The longer but not as long as the album version. <laughs> That's what they call it right here on the thing. So, so yeah, single edits, the full album versions, and the in-betweens are on here. So. <clears throat> And then Welcome to the Neighborhood. And this one, what was the what were the songs that uh, oh I'd lied for I'd lie for you and that's the truth. That's uh, kind of goes along with the uh, I do anything for love, but I won't do that. Sort of the 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 interesting song titles, you know. And this was was this uh, co-written by I can't remember if, it, if this was a Jim Steinman collaboration or not. But uh, 
good stuff. And I also picked up, this was actually just after he passed away, so I was kind of surprised that the store still had this, uh, his uh, VH1 Storytellers uh, live CD. So yeah, he sings songs and he tells stories about the songs. Uh, very, very good stuff. And then, ah, there we go. couldn't have said it better, which was, I don't think this was a, no, this was not a Jim Steinman collaboration, but uh, the, the title track, Couldn't Have Said It Better, is one of my more favorite Meatloaf songs. And uh, I thought there was another... Oh, I think it's coming up here on Bad Out of Hell 3. Uh, this was another Jim Steinman, I think. Yeah, songs by Jim Steinman and Desmond Child. So, yes. Um, oh, it's all coming back to me now. That was... I, I was going to say, he did a cover of a a uh, ballad that somebody else had made famous and couldn't remember what album it was on. That was the song I was thinking of. So, yeah, if it ain't broke, break it. You, you got you got to love some of the song titles, some of the titles of Meatloaf songs. But uh, and rounding out my Meatloaf discography is Hell in a Handbasket. Uh, this one has several good free features on here. Um, Patty Russo, and I can't remember who that is. Uh, Chuck D. from Public Enemy is on here. Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray is also on a uh, song. And uh, Trace Adkins. But yeah, a lot of good songs on here. This is what I think was Meatloaf's last really good album. I checked out stuff after this, and none of it measure, ever measured quite up, measured up quite enough to this album. Uh, uh, the, the Good God is a Woman and She Don't Like Ugly. An interesting song title. And, uh, yeah, and he does a cover of California Dreamin'. Eh, I don't know. I went, that was one of the iffy tracks, but uh, Stand in the Storm was a really good song here, and uh, The Giving Tree. Yeah. 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 What, can, what can I say? Meatloaf had some good stuff. And then we have another, actually, this is made probably another six, uh, another six song, uh, or six album uh, artist that I have. John Cougar Mellencamp, well, John Mellencamp, and yes, I'm in the M's, but this CD is by John Cougar, but it is in the M's, because in, for the sake of uniformity, all of his albums, regardless of what his name was at the time, I file under Mellencamp. Uh, so yeah, just so I don't have to go looking for him, you know. So yeah, this one is Nothing Matters and What If It Did. Uh, so yeah, there's that one. And then, of course, we're getting into his more popular albums, American Fool. And yes, these are all of the uh, remastered uh, al albums, most of them with at least one or two bonus tracks. And we have Uh Huh and Scarecrow and The Lonesome Jubilee and finally Dance Naked. And yes, th there's a gap of a few, so a few albums in here. Uh, I might at some point fill in the gaps, but uh, for now, this uh, satisfies my John Cougar, my John Mellencamp itch. And then uh, we're coming up on 50 minutes, so I better get this uh, the rest of the way done. Anyway, here's an artist that uh, not a lot of people know about. Uh, I don't think she ever, I don't know if she made another album after this. Uh, Leslie Mendelssohn, a great female singer-songwriter. Kind of like, I, I don't know who I could describe her, uh, uh, compare her to. Uh, maybe... Maybe a little like Sarah Bareilles. She kind of has that, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, So Far So Bad is a really good song on here. Um, Hit the Spot is another good one. And uh, Be My Baby, she does a cover of the uh, the Motown song, Be My Baby. It's really good, so, yes. Uh, Swan Feathers is the, is the name of this album. Uh, if you like female singer-songwriters, check her out. Then we have uh, Reaching Back to the Old Great American Songbook here. Johnny Mercer, uh, the uh, Collector Series, uh, some great stuff on here. Accentuate the Positive, I Lost My Sugar in Salt Lake City. That, that's a good song I, I like. I love songs with plays, plays on words, you know. So, uh, one, for my, one for My Baby and One More for the Road. Oh, and My Sugar is So Refined. <laughs> great puns. Song titles with dad jokes. I like that. Anyway, now we're on to, from one uh, extreme to the next, from Johnny Mercer to Metallica. 
And you, you can basically see nothing in here because this is the Black Album with, you know, this, this is, this is their, well, this is their White Album, I guess you'd say, uh, or maybe their Abbey Road. But uh, yeah, Enter Sandman, uh, The Unforgiven, Wherever I May Roam, uh, Nothing Else Matters, all, all the, the big, big Metallica hits are on this album. I'm not a huge Metallica fan, but that's an album that I had to have. And so is this one, s &M, their concert album, uh, two-disc concert album featuring the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra conducted by Michael Kamen. Amazing stuff. If you, did, if you didn't think Metallica's music could get more of, it, more of a force of nature, listen to this bad boy. This is great. And uh, the only other Metallica item that I have is a CD single of the song I Disappear from Mission Impossible 2. I like that one. A lot of their uh, hardcore fan base thought that they sold out by doing a song for a movie. But, and it is a bit a bit more of a conventional, radio-friendly song structure than all their other songs, but I like it. What can I say? Then this was one of the last uh, blind or deaf purchases I made from Skips before it closed. And this was Camila Meza and the Nectar Orchestra uh, with their album Ambar. Very good stuff, uh, Latin stuff, as you as if you couldn't tell. Um, this is not America. is a great uh, song with a great social statement, uh, socio political statement. But yeah, very good stuff. And at first, it took me a while to warm up to this album. I didn't think it was going to stick, but it stuck, and it was great. <clears throat> and then we're on to George Michael. Yes, this is the. Oh, I think it's raining outside. I was looking out the window. The two disc deluxe edition of his album Faith. It's got a lot of uh, 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 remixes and a couple of instrumentals of songs. So, yeah. And this, again, his best and most well known album. And I also picked up a recent cover, well, recent, I guess it's from, oh, 1999. I thought it was from like 2005. A covers album of his, uh, Songs for the Last Century, or Songs from the Last Century. Uh, yes, he does a lot of, um, this album kind of spans a huge time range from uh, old stuff, you know, to, you know, maybe even before Great American Songbook stuff, like Brother Can You Spare a Dime, all the way up to uh, stuff from the 80s, like Roxanne, uh, Miss Sarajevo, which I can't remember, was that a U2 song? I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, Wild is the Wind, he does a cover of that one, and some other Great American Songbook standards. My Baby Just Cares For Me and The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. So, yeah. He's got a great voice and pulls off those songs. And now for the last little block of this CD collection. This is going to be a bit of a long video, sorry. Uh, we have all one artist, and this is Bette Midler. And so, so if you absolutely, totally dislike Bette Midler, or if you're not interested anymore, you can stop the video here. Thank you for watching. But for the rest of you, uh, we have... Uh, her her uh, album, Some People's Lives. This was from 1980, the mid-80s, I think. 1990, actually. Uh, great stuff. And uh, what does she have on here? From a Distance. That is the big hit that was on this album. And then Bet of Roses. Uh, another good album here. <clears throat> Bathhouse Betty. Got that one there. And this one was in my sister's collection, so this is as a special meaning to me. Uh, her album Bet, and this is a much more of a much more of a adult contemporary thing. I think she sets uh, she sets some of her the humorous stuff that are that's in most of her other other albums. She kind of sets that into the background and is a bit more of a serious album uh, with Bet. <coughs> Excuse me. Then she did a, did a pair of covers albums. Bet Midler sings the Rosemary Clooney songbook. And then she went right, turned right around and sang the Peggy Lee songbook. And uh, yeah, some very, very good interpretations on here. Uh, Barry Manilow and Linda Ronstadt feature on the uh, uh, Rosemary Clooney album. And uh, Barry Manilow also features on the uh, Peggy Lee album. And then it, this one is almost redundant because of all the other ones I have, but not quite. Uh, her greatest hits album, Jackpot, The Best Bet. Yes, that's one reason, in my opinion, that's one reason to love Bette Midler is the puns that she puts in her album titles. 
So, but yes, this does have a handful of uh, songs that I don't have on these other CDs. And finally, for this, today's block of my CD collection, the most recent album that she put out, For the Girls. Uh, it's a beautiful album. Uh, salute to the uh, close harmony girl groups of the 40s, 50s, 60s. Great stuff. And, uh, and on one song she duets with Darlene Love. Uh, but yeah, great stuff. Um, Be My Baby, One Fine Day, uh, Tell Him, Mr. Sandman. So yeah, a lot of the 50s and 60s stuff is on here. And she does an outstanding job, as she does in all of her other albums. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> and I said I was going to do another video after this one. I don't know if my voice is going to take it. So uh, we'll have to... Uh, well, 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 obviously we're cutting it here because this is the end of this video. But anyway, uh, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. That'll do it for my Hold Darn CD Collection Chapter 13. If you didn't see anything, uh, or if you have, saw something in here that you especially loved, if you, um, or if you, there's something that you didn't see in here that you think I should have, that's what I was trying to say, let me know in the comments. Uh, tell me what you think of this video. And that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.